Hi everyone, Matt here. And today we are continuing on the, with Pester Quest. And we are now on Volume 9, Route 2. It came from space. <coughs> so this is it. You think this Solux, Solux guy is going to be a piece of grub cake? From what both, in, from what both Karka and Kanaya have told you, this poor guy recently got ghosted by his girlfriend, best friend. You're not quite sure what they were, and apparently neither do their friends. Patrol, Patrol's friend seems to be lo to be as loaded of a word as girlfriend. Regardless from what you've managed to gather, they were quite close, and her ghosting him ha has had serious emotional effects. Thing is, the guy sounds like a mess and and looks like a loser for that, and looks like a loser. And boy, is he ready for you! He's been flying low for a while, and you're ready to scoop him up and baby feed him with the tenderest of worms directly into his mouth. Figuratively speaking. Unless he's into that, then you are so... No. Then so are you, and you're so fucking ready to do it. Literally. Out of all your mutual friends, Carcat has shown the most concern in the most backhanded way of ways. Trapped in the throne, in the throes of an extremely online six sweet dom, he's been unable to tell Solux he's worried. So instead of having car cat, no, blah, 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 blah. And so instead of having an honest conversation with a longtime friend, car cat has arranged for an alternian meet brute between the two of you. It's foolproof, which means it's you proof. Car cat gave you an honestly frightening amount of detail on Solux's everyday routine. The main difficulty is he seldom leaves his hive. He's kind of, he's kind of, an, he's kind of an indoor boy. Today, though, you've gotten lucky. Solux has made plans to see a friend, and you're going to casually bump into the guy and play out all of Carcat's carefully curated plans, step by step, and befriend him. But first, he actually has to show. For someone with such a rigid schedule, he's sure not great at sticking to it. So you're just left here, an alien train station sitting on an alien bench and trying to not make eye contact with any of the aliens around you. Sure, they might be potential friends, but no. I'm pretty sure that Solux is the guy for you this time around. You know, it, it's the same way you've known everything else since this particular leg of your me meandering journey has begun. It's Scabby Doc Scratch, right? That cue ball looking motherfucker stole the memories of all your previous buddies. It stands to reason that he stole some other ones too. In fact, Aradia is helping. Uh, Aradia helping you remember has just made you realize that there could be so many other things you forgot. You can't shake the feeling that you're still being used, that everything you do, every move you make, feeds back into some shitty mastermind's plan. You've tried zapping back to Doc Scratch's mansion, but you can't get there either. He's out of bounds, so you've just defaulted to your usual thing. Friend acquisition. You are playing into someone's hands. You just know it, but the alternative is to just do nothing. Sit quietly in a room alone and not have any contact with anyone, and who knows if that is exactly what Doc Scratch wants you to do in the first place. It's really hard to do anything at all, all the time. Anyway, Solux. You've heard a lot about this dude, and you're certain he's heard all about you. How could he not? You are basically best friends with everyone, with everybody he knows. You are, you are an unstoppable friending force. Oh fuck, there he is. He's, well... He's pretty much exactly the way you imagined. How did Carcat play? The skinny fuck and told loser who would be utterly lost without Carcat's devotion and guidance. Yep, just like that. What should you do? 
let's tell him that we're Car Cat's friend. You greet Solux cheer cheerily and tell him that you're Car Cat's friend, and you know all about him. Solux looks you up and down. His nose wrinkles, like he's just stepped on a piece of particularly fragrant dog shit. You stealthily, you stealthily check the sole of your shoes to see if the unpleasant aroma is coming from you. Nope. And what's wrong? Did you come on too strong? Oh no, you fool. You absolutely fucking buffoon. This guy is part of the most oppressed class of people on Arturnia. A gamer. Of course he's wary of you. He probably can't even tell if you're a PC or a console gamer, or how objectively right your opinions about RPGs are. Timing was absolutely crucial here. You should have approached him as if he were a de delicate baby gazelle, just inching up to the watering hole for a fresh sip of Mountain Dew. And then, before you knew it, Fountain recounted to him how much you've managed to break, to to break Tony Hawk's pro skater too with all the sick moves you learned. Dazzled him with your objectively right gaming opinions. <coughs> this. This. That. This is so fucking typical. He didn't even fucking ask. Just fuck. He can't mind his own fucking business. You are utterly confused. This wasn't part of Carcat's script. This is like the GZ thing all over again. He never er, fucking asked. And he never fucking warns me. Not all your friends have to be friends with each other. Why is that so fucking hard for him to understand? Fuck. I want nothing to do with that juggler piece of shit and whatever the hell you are. Uh, juggler? He lifts an eyebrow. Oh. Sorry. I haven't pegged you as a hunky ass liquor, but I should have known better. You two look the part. Solix is absolutely unimpressed. Wow, you weren't expecting this. Are you are you experiencing a heater gamer moment right now? You think these might be alternian slurs, but you can't really confirm without whipping your phone out in front of him and making a fool of yourself by opening your urban dictionary mid-conversation. The train pulls away from the platform, but the troll in front of you seems to have completely forgotten about that. Why the fuck do you want? Very bluntly tell him that you've heard he's having a rough time and you just want to be his friend. Some of his friends have told you that they're worried and... Sulks looks absolutely livid now. Did KK tell you I needed help? Well, no, it wasn't. He let out identical yelps and turn and turn to see a ridiculous minuscule clown car. Just really fucking small. There are two big horns on the front on the front and two bigger horns on the back. Motherfucking miracles! Small door of the car opens, and out comes a shoe that really had no business in that car in the first place. There is absolutely no way that Game Z fits in there, but somehow he's folding himself out. He turned to Solux and Cherry Con consternated look, but he just seems annoyed. A leg follows the shoe accompanied by a series of cracks as he un pulls himself from inside the car. Recently, you've become a bit of a bone expert, and you are most certain that that is not a noise that they should be making. You can't look away. You are absolutely hypnotized by this display of clownliness. Hey, motherfuckers. I was just gone. All out and about when I have it upon the two of y'all. Can hardly believe my oculars. Well, looks my good bitch I haven't seen since. Oh, fucking. When's the first time we went? We met? Oh, so you're double teaming me now. This is some s sick shit. Trying to clown me from both sides. Now, hold on. Gamesy wasn't part of the plan. Plan? Ah, shit. This always goes smoother in the rom coms. It's okay, my most friend, lustful friend. There is no need for plans. We're all part of a greater plan that brought us together. 
Thug takes a step back, takes a critical look at both of you, and flies away so fast the shockwave almost topples you over. Gamzee waves him a very unaffected goodbye, eyes glazed over. Well, you beefed it. A very real wor word describing a real action that people take. You beefed it big time. You say beans out loud because you beefed it so hard you basically made yourself an entire meal. Ah, uh, it's okay, my lo my most universal universal friends. That's just how a motherfucker says hi sometimes. By flying away from you as fast as possible. I know what would cheer you, cheer you up. It's drugs, isn't it? It's, it's definitely drugs. Clown end. Oh, it it meant horns as in the honking horns, not little. <laughs> I get it. Right, the time isn't right. You decide to hang back and wait a little longer. You stand on the platform a few polite feet away from him. Before long, a train pulls up, and you see Tol Solix take a furtive peek inside before walking back to out to the platform. That's Interesting. Second train comes in. He seems to deem this one worthy and hops in. You can't attend before rushing in. The car is almost empty. It's just you, Solix, and a pile of blankets in a corner. The inside of the car is beam themed. Man, trolls really love bugs. Solix takes a bench and puts his bag next to him, so there's no chance anyone will sit there. Luckily for you, the one in front of him is still empty. They're all empty, actually, so you take it. There's something a little nostalgic about this setup. Feels like any minute now, Solix is going to ask you arbitrary questions that may affect some cosmetic choices in your life moving forward. But he doesn't. In fact, Sol Solix's face remains totally neutral. All he does to acknowledge your presence is lift a single brow. The time you've spent near him may have been short so far, but the idea of him... But the idea of him you've built in your head is quite strong. You've heard enough from his friends to know he's not bothered at all. However, if you didn't know better, you would say Solix is emitting the energy of someone who walked into an empty bathroom and chose the most secluded stall, only for someone else to walk in and choose the one next to his. Which is nonsense, because you do know better. All the second-hand knowledge you got of the guy can't be wrong. He's doing what you mentally dubbed his... Sundere act. You keep staring. Can I help you, dude? Hmm. This isn't how you expect to introduce yourself, but you, but you do it anyway. Okay. He pointedly pulls out his phones and doesn't look at you anymore. Okay, so you're sensing that you need some space. You pull out your own phone. What? There was doubt that that you had one because that hasn't been men mentioned in a good two thirds of this game. Ha! Silly. Little did you know, the phone survived it. It all in your hoodie pocket. They truly don't make phones like this anymore. Solux is holding is holding his horizontal, which gives the feeling that he's playing a video game. Well, he's got you beat alright. You don't have any games on yours. You decide instead to go through your messages. Wow, you had so many plans with so many of your friends, and you went and disappeared on them. Fuck. They were all counting on you. Okay, you got this. Car Cat's ba Car Cat basically showing you this guy's entire game library, and you are going to super casually bring up games he likes. No problem. There was a name on it that had really surprised you, but in hindsight, it makes sense. Back at home, the game's still wired wildly popular. Nobody knows exactly where Minecraft came from, but fuck, everyone loves it. You loudly announced to absolutely fucking nobody, because you're being so casual and friendly, that you love Minecraft. Every gamer knows that, but you get no reaction. Fuck. That, the guy can probably tell you don't even know how to use a texture pack. That's fine, no harm done. You know, he is also a huge fan of attack, drone, and solid stick. You didn't have time to find anything about it on or the heel. Besides the fact that it was apparently staunch, staunchly anti-war. The guy making the game the games got away with it for for a while because before the Empire caught up with him. Mostly because nobody actually understood what the fuck it was about. Name dropping it alone 
would surely be enough to show him what badass gamer you are. Nothing. Gone. Group Stronghold 2? No. Fortnite? Damn. You were completely certain all these sick games would prove irresistible controversial conversational topics. You look sick. I don't actually give a fuck, but please don't puke on my shoes. Let's start with you. Immediately. You reach your and you're fine. That sounds like bullshit. But I'll believe it, since I don't want to make this any more awkward. I'm Solix. Oh, you're surprised he, he's changed his tune so fast. You're that alien everyone's talking about, aren't you? How do you know? You've been messaging me for days, dude. I'm totally weirdly inv and been totally weirdly invasive to me. Uh, whatever. I'm in a good mood today, so we're starting over. Okay, okay. This isn't that bad. You can do this. You introduce yourself over again, and try to play off the fact that you know a creepy amount of insider knowledge about this guy. I don't see what the big... Hey, what? Why are you being so loud? Can't you see I'm trying to sleep here? Small olive troll pops out of the blankets in the corner. Somehow this really shakes Solux. We need to leave immediately. Uh, why? You don't understand. This guy he here is going to die, and we're going to go with him if we don't get out right fucking now. So what will you do? Uh, let's tell Solix that nothing is wrong. Put your hand on Solix's shoulder. There is nothing wrong. The train continues to shake. Are you out of your mind? We have to... The shaking stops as suddenly as it starts. Both Solix and the Sleepy Troll look confused. Everything looks fine. Sleepy Troll just yawns and goes back under the blankets. I don't understand. This isn't how things work. What did you do? Who knows? You're not entirely sure what Solix thought was going to happen. Is he okay? No, I... I hear voices? I hope he's getting the right help for that. No, you recycled asswipe. The voices of the dead, or more importantly, the imminently deceased. And I very clearly heard, heard the voice of the of blanket troll right there. And now, I don't. That doesn't happen. That ne that's never happened before. Oh, well, isn't this a good thing? It's not bad. That makes you happy to hear. You feel like you're finally making progress and getting through to him. Sorry, I got really stressed for a moment. Fuck. This is awkward. Hey, Sherm, it's fine. You enjoy the rest of your ride, of the ride with him in, mo in mostly companionable silence. The train pulls into what seems like seems to be the right stop. A Solux stands up. You're friends with KN, right? Kinda yeah? Kinda yeah. <laughs> Oh, yes. You very eagerly nod. Well, I'm heading her way if you're interested. You're, you're nowhere near as annoying as TZ and KK made you sound. Silk smiles. It's your first time you've seen him genuinely smile in your time together. You tell him that you would love to see Kanye again. Wait, hold on. Terezi and Carcat think you're annoying? He snorts. No, no. They just described you honestly. And being how you are, it's part of your charm, I guess. As long as he finds it charming, too. You're okay with this backhanded compliment. Dude, you you have to to stop being so overeager. It's a little embarrassing. And anyway, I hope you didn't have a heavy breakfast. Huh? Does he expect you to run there? You can teleport easily. You can get there fast. That's nice. But we're going to arrive with more style. Jesus. Before he's done talking, you're already in midair. You've been lifted by some psionics before, but it's the first time you feel completely weightless. It's like the gra it's like gravity has completely forgotten you have to answer. It's like gravity has completely forgotten you have to answer to it. 
Face yourself. I refuse to slow down. So you do. Everything around you becomes a blur. You know, you're somewhere, but everywhere it just looks like colors. The world chart bends back into view. You're in Kanya's hive. Kanya's hive. Solix looks smug. Kanya looks from him to you and back again. Well, I'm happy. That would look. Fuck, I forgot how to do her voice. Well, I am happy. Well, I am happy. Fucking shit. Hang on. Well, I am happy you made a friend. I wish you had given me a warning. No offense. Then take it. But you are a little curious as to why you would have you had to take the train over. Zolg seems like he could have easily flown here. So why? Can't a dude just be super fucking jazzed about public transportation? Fuck the entire planet and stupid fucking chemospectrum system. But at least the train can take you where you need to go for the most part. Well, you can't say that the same runs true for where you're from, no. He knows that I will not open the door otherwise. Oh? Hey, Anne, you're really killing my vibe here. Really harshing it. Well, I would think our friend would appreciate knowing that... While powerful, you are still a developing young troll. And I'd rather not have to mop your brains off my front door. Are you really doing this again, Marum? On last, on last name basis, again, Solang. Solux, Soluxander. Yes, we are doing this again. Being the naturally curious person that you are, You've amassed a good amount of troll anatomy knowledge by now. Thus far, weird alien brain anatomy has eluded you. What happens is that I have big brains that is almost as big as my... What happens is that when we were younger, Solux would get really sleepy if he used his powers too much. Then Gan found G Gorgiel found terms like dopamine, noradrenaline, and siamine. Now she thinks she knows better than me. So please, I sent you the links. We both know oh, the same amount. Yeah, whatever. I came to do a favor, so I decided I needed assistance for a change. So looks if you're if you're going to make excuses, make good ones. Instead of being annoyed or embarrassed, Solux seems delighted to hear Kanye's words. He's already, he already looks way more relaxed and in his element than he was in the train. So what's the problem this time? Where is it? Well, you see, the keyboard will not work. I just have no idea what happened. Kanye points to her computer. It's very clearly been cut in half. Most likely sawn in half. Very cleanly, if you must add. Solux look, looks at it like he is seriously considering what could have happened to this computer. Did you try turning it on and off again? And off? Naturally. I figured something like this is, had happened, so I came prepared. Pulls out some things from his bag, including what you... What looks like an identical version of Kanye's computer. You think this may happen a lot. While he gets to work saying things up, Kanye takes you aside. I have to say, I really, I am really impressed. Yes, you are quite impressive. Zolix has not been at his, at his best recently. You see, we may, we had what you may call a falling out in our friend group, which resulted in three serious injuries and one death. 
details of which have not, are not mine to share. The Solix was used in a rather heen, heinous way. And I, did, and I did not distance myself in any way from the troll who caused all of this. Solix, in a very Solix fashion, blamed himself and withdrew from all of his friends. And when he started talking again, he still refused to engage me in conversation. Until he finally acknowledged my medical condition. Oh boy, Kanye hadn't mentioned a medical condition up until this point. You hope you haven't accidentally made her over-exert herself. Or been rude in any way. You wonder if it's okay to ask. I can see you are interested in what my condition is. It is quite serious and frustrating at times. But I have stopped blaming myself for it. And just accepted it as part of my life. You nod. You are overall a rather healthy individual. You tend to get injured on a bi-weekly basis, but somehow you... But somehow, always miraculously come out of it just fine. Huh, you truly are one lucky son of a bitch. It is still a little embarrassing to admit. You tell her she's your friend. You will not judge her at all. In fact, you want to take a moment to appreciate her for not judging you. She definitely has him more together than you. She smiles one of her warmest smiles she's given you. Very well. I'm not proud of this, but I... I am... Um... My medical condition is that I'm bul I am bulge cursed by Variska. Variska cursed my bulge. You gave at her. Holy shit. Thank you. I have learned to live with it. Kanya, God, you are just so, so sorry about this. I'm joking. I'm making a joke. About my crush on Briska being a medical condition. I thought I would bring a bit of levity to the situation, but you just look so concerned. You tell Connie. Connie had that her sarcasm face looks like a lot, looks a lot like her normal face. Yes, people have told me that before. Slugs chooses that moment to slide back in. It's all set. Thank you. I added something that you've been bothering me about for a while. They move towards the computer. And you can't see the screen from where you are, but you can see Kanye's face light up at whatever they're looking at. Oh, Solix. I knew you did not want to share these pictures. I hope I did not push it too far. No, you didn't. I was just being a stupid fuck. I don't know why I was so hung up on it. I'm... I'm six now? Oh, yeah. <coughs> I'm six now. I'm technically an adult. Not really, but thank you. It means a lot to me. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. We both look like stupid grubs in these pictures. That means he grabs your attention. Well, we were quite young. You try moving closer to take a peek, but Kanye throws you an absolutely murderous look. Whatever for embarrassing childhood memory lane they're going down, it seems that it's deeply personal to Solix. For once in your life, you mind your own business. It's kind of awkward to see myself like that. What the fuck am I wearing? It wasn't very fashionable for the time. I would know I hadn't made it for you. It's not you or the fashion, it's just... Picking up on his discomfort, Kanye saves the day before you can butt in. Focus more on what you had done to your own hair. So let... So... So, Lex, and what had you been thinking when you did that? Hey. <coughs> After a few more minutes of reminiscing, they move away from the computer and back to where you're standing. You hope they both appreciate you staying in your own lane. Anyway, I have to say I am rather surprised to see you with company. Yeah, I guess I got my whole lone bark beast reputation to keep, but what can I say? Is that why Miss Pixies keeps bringing up the delightful conversation you two are having? Well, I got big fucking news. Turns out she's not as boring as I thought she'd be. 
It's going. Killing where? Slug shrugs. Just going. Kinda of, yeah, hums and hums in agreement. And is, but decides to drop it. It's funny to think you thought this guy was a complete loser. He seems to have more game than the average gamer. Self chat in a way. Wait, hold on, why does Kanye get to introduce Solux to become to someone, but Carcat has to come up with an incredibly con convoluted plan for you two to meet? No offense to you or KK, but KK has no filter on what he lets into his life. Yeah, no offense. If you like, you may start taking actual offense. I hate meeting new people. Do I look like I know what the fuck good Dave is? Bitch, I'll kill you. No, you will not. No, I won't. It's a meme. Fuck him. She smiles pleasantly. You feel a little bit like an outsider. Like you're missing some history between them. But you can't help but feel a little warm on the inside at the side friendship. Anyway, we should leave soon. Why? I thought you were going to save the day. It's a rather long journey. It's whatever. I left some shit running it that I need to sh check on. Oh. Ooh, hacker shit? Of course not. Alright, well, at least let me get a couple of shirts I can fix for you. If you would be kind enough to drop a couple of things at the drone office. Fix the sweater for Parkat. Yeah, no problem. The moment counting you steps away, Solix is in your face. So, we're not staying over because you're obviously not six and having you over for a sleepover would be fucking weird. You can't argue with that. But also, you seem okay. I wouldn't mind spending more time with you, which is something I don't tell everybody. There is a frozen muscle beast next to your pla place near the drone office. We can go there. <coughs> oh fuck. Oh yes, it's a friend date. Sweet victory. Uh, let's teleport away from the danger. As the train continues to shake, you grab Solux's arm and teleport. And, somehow, you end up in front of John's house? Huh, well. Well, of all the places you've visited, his neighborhood is probably the friendliest. And there's something about the knowledge that Dad is around the area that makes you feel safe. Like, if you needed it, you could absolutely get a dose of print total guidance. Or at least a, press, a fresh croissant. I'm guessing it's from Hassan. <coughs> or whatever. You turn to check on your new friend. Solix is scrunched up in the house's shadow. Trying to play it cool. Obviously shaken by how sunny it is. Once he realizes that you are indeed not being burned alive by the sun, he visibly re relaxes. What the actual fuck did you do? This is obviously not all hernia. It's a little hard to explain things without... Flexing at this point, so you allow yourself to brag a little in hopes of impressing Solix. You explain that not only is this place safe, but also John programs a little. He's probably worse than Carcat at. Did? And it'll surely cheer Solix up. Your certain Dave is also around, and he reminds you a little of a, of. Can you stop? Fuck. Stop what? I don't think. You get how weird you're being. I haven't told you anything about me. That somehow you managed to know a lot of really personal information about me. Honestly, it's creepy AF. I know your friends with basically all my friends, and I'm sure they told you I'm kind of an aloof piece of shit and grumpy and hard to get along with. And half of the time I feel like I don't even deserve them. And then you walked in and they all adore you instantly. Fuck, even EQ likes you. 
You don't understand. Shouldn't this make your friendship easier? You don't get it. I'm way more complex than whatever the fuck I say online and what my friends have told you. Real life isn't like a dating sim in which you fumble your way into the right choice. Why do you even want to friend me? Well, both of you share so many friends, it's only natural, isn't it? Solix looks at you, his expression remains neutral, yet somehow you feel harshly judged. I don't think you understand how things work for people like me. I had a wake-up call in which I realized nothing I do really matters. Whether I want it or not, I am destined to be a war machine. I already got a taste of it once. It can't be harder than the first blood, right? He smiles a little. It makes you feel worse. Solux is letting you in on something... <coughs> on something that you don't have the full picture for. Anything you say at this point wouldn't be any help. I'm stupid enough that I'll resist it. So it will definitely suck big time for me. But I already made the mistake of trusting someone who, who let me believe I could make a change. But shit's got fucked, and that's that. This is most, this is most certainly not that. It's not too late. Things are better. You've made sure of it. You can make a change. Both of you. Both of you. You're not entirely sure what he's talking about, but he doesn't have to become anything he doesn't want to. I can see why the others might like you. And for whatever it's worth, I do wish I could believe you too. Before you can react, he's flying away. Fuck, shit. Now he's lost on Earth, and oh god, he could have at least have waited for you to get him back home. What if the wrong people find him and do fucked up experiments on him? Oh, but he, he definitely doesn't want to have anything to do with you. See you, space gamer. <laughs> and that is all for this episode on Pest Request. There should be another video out today and such uh there's a playlist uh in the top right corner of the screen and yeah this blah 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 blah, blah. if you like the video like it if you like my content subscribe uh and have a good day and do what you do best